Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to continue on with the Polish beer month that I've been filming for you across the month of May. So for this one we are going to go to one of the bigger breweries in Poland. These guys are probably one that you've all heard of before and we're going to go to Żywiec who are from the very southern part of Poland. And this one is their APA, their American Paleo and I didn't even know that they did this beer, I have to admit. I went on the website and so that they've actually got quite a decent range of beers now. They've got Porter's, Box, Marzovas, Mertzen beers basically. And there are a, a quite a, a, there is quite a decent range of beers there. But this one was another one that was very kindly given to me by my friend Dominika. She seems to like these American paleos and she also quite likes wheat beers as well. So she picked out a few of her favourites from Poland uh, to bring back for me. So thank you to Dominika for giving me this beer to review. So we have a couple more regional beers after this one to review. And then we'll be back into the craft beer reviews. So we'll see how we get on with this one. It should be quite interesting. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to any future GVX reviews that I might do. And there's all the usual social media down there, Facebook, Twitter, and on tap. So please follow me on there. Your support would be much appreciated. And if you do want to see more beer reviews, just subscribe to the channel below. As I said, there's quite a few different Polish beers down there now, and there will be more added over the rest of May. So I hope you guys are enjoying the Polish beer month as much as I am because some of the beer that I've tried from Poland so far, especially the regional and craft stuff, has been really quite awesome. So do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers you'd like me to try. And I do apologise in advance for any bad Polish pronunciations. Very difficult language, of course. But anyway, to tell you about Żywiec. So Żywiec are based in the southwest of Poland near Oswiecim and it's actually very close to the Czech and Slovak border. The Żywiec Brewery was founded in 1856 by the Habsburg family, who were obviously the rulers of Austria-Hungary back in that time. But the brewery was founded by Archduke Albrecht, and then the brewery facility was built on land in the village of uh, Pavlusi, and it was chosen mainly because it's of its proximity to the local mountains, which I think you would say uh, Sukrzyzny Mountains. I'm not sure about that pronunciation, but this, these mountain ranges, of course, provided an excellent water source for the brewery. But by 1857, the brewery was producing 18,000 hectolitres of beer per year and it continued to expand. The first head brewer was apparently Henry Bauer and he was succeeded in 1875 by Julius Wagner and he was the creator of the famous Juviet's Porter. Apparently that's one of the kind of um, quite famous macro beers in Poland these days. But following the death of Archduke Albrecht, the brewery was taken over by Archduke Karl Stefan Habsburg, who I believe was Albrecht's nephew. But the brewery continued to expand under his guidance and they actually put a lot of work into the science behind beer during his tenure. And the exports grew because the brewery bought its own railway wagons. There was a big expansion of the railway at this time, of course, and this helped the Zwiec beer circulate all throughout Poland and to other parts of Europe, of course. But after the First World War, the company was taken under control by the Polish government for a period of time because of the formation of the Second Polish Republic. However, this act was actually repealed in 1924 because the Habsburg family, or the members who were involved with the brewery, had actually contributed to Polish institutions and had also served in the Polish army. So they were basically given their property back after it was confiscated under the formation of the new or Second Polish Republic. But Karl Stefan died in 1933 and he left the brewery to his son Charles uh, Olbrachtowi, I guess you would call it. Maybe they've just pulled made the name a bit Polish actually. There's quite a lot of that went on, Germanizing or polifying some of the names. But the Zwiec province was actually taken over by the Nazis who named it Seisbusch and Charles was actually imprisoned after he refused to sign the German nationality list and this was because he was a big fan of Poland, he was a patriot and he'd also been a Polish officer in the army. But he was only saved from death after protests came from Italy and also from the Swedish monarchy. But the brewery was taken over and run by the German army or the German administration as the Beskiden Brauerei and it was mainly brew they were mainly brewing beer for the German army of course who were occupying Poland at that time but almost immediately after the Germans withdrew the Russian Red Army occupied the brew and from there it became a nationalized company and it recovered from the destruction of war by 1949 they were producing 19,000 hectoliters of beer and a part of the company worked heavily over the next 40 50 years with the Warsaw Fermentation Institute and in the 1950s they were really trying to create beers with a suitable shelf life that meant they could export and there was some rumblings about beers being exported over to America but I couldn't figure out from the translation of the, the article that I had whether that actually happened but they were involved with a, a girl who I think had moved from America into Poland 
but there was a lot of um, science going on into, into the investigation of making long shelf life beers. But production obviously decreased in the early 1980s as socio-economic reform went on in Poland, as it did in many of the former communist countries, and the company once again became a public share company, I think, in September 1991 after the fall of communism. But since 1994, the Juviets Brewery has been owned by Heineken from the Netherlands, and Heineken have invested a lot of money in modernising the brewery, and it's described as one of the most modern macrobrewery facilities in Europe these days. So yeah, that's your company history of Juviets. So we'll get on to the actual tasting portion of this be of this review now. So the other beers you can get from the, the Juviets Brewery are the Jasna Pelna, which I believe is the kind of standard one that you get. You'll see that in a lot of the pubs all over the place. There's the Saison, the Biawa, the APA, the Bock, the Marksova, which is the Mertzen beer, the Porter beer, and the Nisko Alkoholvi, which is the low alcohol content one. 1.1% 1 .1 if I remember correctly. But yeah, I actually didn't know they did this this beer, the APA, or the Bock beer, or the Porter, or anything. I just knew that they were a sort of... Um, Lager brewery, if you like. I thought they were somewhat similar to the likes of uh, of Bitburger or Radgeberger or something like that from Germany. But yeah, they do seem to have a fair wee range of beers these days. So as you can see, it's got the nice crest on it there. You can see that's actually on the glasswork on the bottle there too. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's fairly nicely presented. This one, you can see Juviette's on the top label there, and it's also on the bottle cap. There is a, a sort of gold crown on the top there, and I guess that's supposed to represent the Habsburg royal family that were involved with this brewery. There was actually a case where the Habsburg family sued the Polish government for using the, the Habsburg family crest on the uh, the labels of the beer and it was actually settled out of court and I, I think after that they had to stop um, using the beers but instead they have it using the symbol but they started using the crowns after that. So a little bit of another interesting point there for you. The, the Habsburg family were wanting to claim 77 million dollars from the from the Polish government for allowing that to happen. So yeah, it was um, <clears throat> quite an interesting time, of course, but this one is a 5.4% American paleo, as you would have guessed. And uh, yeah, there's not really much else to say about it. It doesn't say on the website what hops or malts are used in the beer. So we'll get it open and get on with the tasting then. So yeah, once again, thank you to Dominica for giving me this beer. As you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one. So we'll get it out and into the glass and see how we get on. It actually smells a little bit fruity as you're pouring it out. And it does look like a pale ale actually, which is quite interesting. <clears throat> yeah, so as you can see, this beer is poured kind of what you would expect from a pale ale. It's got a little bit of opacity to it, but it's a nice kind of rich, yellowy, orange, amber color. It's a, there's a finger of a solid <clears throat> frothy white head on this one, some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. It does look like a really quite nice beer. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on. And it actually smells like an American pale ale too. I wasn't expecting that, you know, especially from a sort of uh, from a macro brewery company for it to actually have the typical aroma. Yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, grapefruity character in there. Maybe some kind of peaches or mangoes, a little bit of citrus actually. But yeah, it does actually have some of these American hop aromas in it, which is quite nice. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be more like um, grassy or floral or something like that. Usually the big brewed APAs do have more of that floral kind of grassy aromatic character to them. But this one definitely has a bit of that American fruity hop coming out of it. So yeah, we'll sugar it up a bit more and take a closer look. So yeah, as you sugar up, you start to get more of the malty notes out of this one. You start to get some of the bready character. There's a little bit of a an almost cardboardy note comes out of this one. There's a little bit of caramel, some <clears throat> kind of grainy or biscuity aromas coming out there. Just a little bit of sweetness. And you can smell the grassy and slightly uh, floral character actually. So it is nice, but there is some nice um, fruity, sweet fruity character to this one. So yeah, um, just take a little bit of time and smell the take a take in the aroma of this beer before you actually get stuck into it. And I have to admit, I'm surprised at the quality of the aroma on this beer, especially when it's a macro brewed beer. So yeah, just take a little bit of time and see how you get on with that. But we'll get stuck into this beer now. So this is the APA American Pale Ale from Juviets in Juviets in the very southwestern part of Poland, near the Czech and Slovak border. Nostrovia, thank you once again to Dominika for this beer. Slanje.
that's not bad. It does. The malt becomes a bit more prominent in it than the hops. Like from the aroma that's in there, you do expect a little bit more of the hops to come out in this beer. But that said, it is, you know, it's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to beers like this, the big breweries want beers that can be easily sessioned. And this is a kind of, I guess this is a take on an American paleo that is supposed to do that. You know, it doesn't ha quite have the same big bitterness that you'd expect from an American APA. It doesn't quite have the same kind of fruity, juicy character as that, but it's got a nice, more malty feel to it. And there is a little bit of the sort of slightly grassy and floral hop character. So in terms of that, it's more, it's quite interesting because we always talk about like for example craft takes on lager beers but here you can take a macro take on a craft beer so it's quite interesting in that regard they're almost it's almost as if juviettes are trying to bring some of the craft beer styles into the, the sort of uh, kind of regular beer drinkers market if you like so it's quite interesting in that regard i would say but yeah you know i'm actually quite impressed with that i mean not in terms, it's, you know, by no means this is the best American pale ale I've had, by no stretch, by no means at all actually. But for the, the for it being a macro brewery, um, it's just not what I would expect at all. There is a good amount of what you would normally expect from an APA in this beer. So they've done a good job on this one. The whole point of this beer, I guess, as I say, is to bring a craft beer style to the more kind of mainstream beer market, if you like. And you know it is fairly enjoyable that, of course the old Polish beer styles from what I gather, a lot of them like Baltic porters and things like that and a lot of the big breweries do produce really quite nice Baltic porters but I'm surprised to say that, um, that Juviet's actually do a quite a nice American paleo. This is a nice light sessionable beer so if you're not into the big hoppy bitterness of the APAs this could be a good one to kind of start with and get yourself used to the style and then gradually you can work your way into the more hoppy and bitter things. So that's a good point to remember about this beer. Hmm. But yeah, no, it's a light, sessionable beer. You know, if all you had was macro beer on tap, but they did have one of these, this would probably be your sort of beer of choice. This, If you're more into hoppy beers and things, and you're just in a regular pub that only serves like Lech or uh, Tiski or JVX or something, then this would be the beer that you'd probably want to go for. It's quite nice within that regard. So in terms of the flavours in this one, I would say the middle of your palate's blanketed with a nice, quite bready malt there. There's some biscuity character on top of it, a little bit of that grainy sweetness, almost like digestive biscuits that you get in Scotland and, of course, the UK as well. And there's a little bit of richer caramel that goes down the middle of the tongue too, of course, but around the edges of the palate, You've got these kind of nice hoppy flavours. They're a bit more subtle, of course, than the American APAs. Like I say, the whole idea of this is to bring a craft beer style to the more kind of uh, mainstream market, I guess. But around the edges of the palate, you've got some nice smoothie grass hop character. There's a little bit of floral dryness around the front edge of the tongue, and there's just maybe a little bit of earthy character in the back corners of the palate too. But overall, it's actually, you know, it's fairly nice, and it's quite an enjoyable beer, this. And um, I was quite surprised at that. I wasn't expecting this to be that good an APA considering it's from a big brewery. But you know, they've actually done a fairly nice job on this one, I have to say. Mm. So yeah, just behind the front curve of the tongue there, you'll pick up that little oily bubble in this that you always get in this style that brings up some of the fruity characters. There's a little bit of um, a kind of grapefruity feel to this one, of course, you've got a little bit of citrus too. But it actually feels a little bit darker than that. It's a bit more rounded and a bit more of a sort of candied fruit flavour in this one than the kind of quite pungent, oily fruit flavour that you get from some of the other styles. But, you know, in terms of an of a, of a, of a American paleo, you know, they've actually done a fairly decent job on this one. It has all the flavours you would expect. And it's just quite light and quite sensible. The only thing that it really misses with regards to the style is it needs a bit more bitterness. But of course, that's something that kind of craft beer drinkers really quite like. This one, of course, is an ideal introduction to the style for somebody who's really more used to lager beers and Hellas beers and things like that. So yeah, overall, I, th I do think that Juviet's have done a fairly good job with this one. This is quite a nice session beer. 
so yeah, if you like paleos that are a little bit more malty and just have a little bit of subtle hot, fl of hot flavours, then you will enjoy this one. It's actually quite well balanced. This is probably actually one of the better macro beers that I've had on the channel for you. So do bear that into account because it's not really fair if you're reviewing beer, it's not really fair to regard macro beer in the same light as you would craft beer. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people forget. But in terms of macro beer, this is probably one of the better macro beers that I've come across recently. So I would recommend to check it out if you are open to trying such a thing. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, I'd say this one's mid-bodied. Definitely mid-bodied. The carbonation in it is very smooth, which is quite nice. You've got a nice, kind of slightly sweet character from the malt base. Again, very smooth. There is a little bit of dryness from some of the, the grainy aspects of the beer, but overall, the malt base is quite sweet. The hoppy character is really quite smooth as well. There's a little bit of dryness around the front of the palate from the uh, the floral aromatic side of things, and just behind that front curve of the tongue too, there's a little bit of fruity, juicy character, a little bit of citrus, but mainly a, just a kind of nice, slightly sweet, grapefruity or passion fruity flavour in there too so yeah I mean overall as I said probably one of the better macro beers that I've reviewed on the channel for you lately so yeah I've always said on the channel that I found that the Germans and probably the Czechs are the only ones who can do macro beer properly but maybe Poland are actually up in that category as well I mean if if Chivietz can produce a beer like this and I've heard that their porter and their bock beer is actually quite nice too so I'll need to try those and see how I get on with them but if they can produce beers like this, then, you know, maybe Poland fits into that category as well. I'm sure in the future we can find out. This is actually my first macro beer that I've reviewed from Poland in quite some time, actually. So we'll see how we get on with some other ones in the future. But I would recommend if you are open to trying macro beers and you want a sort of well-balanced APA, then, you know, this is one you might want to try. I've actually been quite impressed with this. I wasn't expecting to think much of this beer, but it has kind of surpassed what I expected of it. So... Do try it for yourselves and see how you get on. But anyway, um, as, is you, as is usual with my beer reviews, thank you again for watching. Please let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Like I say, there are other craft beers in Poland that will probably be more suited to a craft beer person's taste. But in terms of macro beers, this has been one of the better ones that I've reviewed on the channel for you. So have to give Juviet's commendation for that. So do check out the beer yourself. Let me know your own thoughts on it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you're enjoying the Polish Beer Month. Go and check out my social media things and do let me know some of the other Polish beers and breweries that you'd like me to have a look at. Slange just now and I will catch you soon with the next video. We will be going back to some craft breweries in the near future, but there will be some more regional beers over the next maybe three, four videos. So do check those out as well. Nostrovia.